think you can beat me in soybeans? Forget about it. We do have two tropical storms or hurricanes coming in the Gulf. May get a lot of wind, a lot of rain, so who knows what's gonna happen. You know, I'm a sixth generation farmer. Can I keep expanding? What can I do? What am I not doing right? I'm confirmed sixth generation farmer. It's stretch pretty thin right now, it's just that time of year. It's not gonna be hard to beat Weaver. He's not even in my realm of thoughts. Like, pick out the worst plant. That should be how Weaver's crap looks. Just south of Cedarville, north of Jamestown, right by our shop. And my steering's gonna try to mess up on me. Technology's great when it works. Lose your auto steer at nighttime, you know, when it's so dusty you can't see anything. It makes it fun. My visual auto steer is not the best a lot of the times. A lot of gremlins we're still trying to work out. We finally got all three combines up and going. It's been a big headache. So the last few days, we've, we've had some pretty good days and we're averaging over 3,300 acres a day now, which we should be able to do more. But like I said, there's just been a bunch of little hiccups here and there. I mean, if you look behind us now, I got three guys trying to get, to, get an auger set. We had a chain come off and just that little mess up there, we can't dump anything into the grain bins. Now I got a full semi and two full buggies, so we're eventually gonna have to sit, and you know, that's just time wasted right there, but you know, we can't do anything about it. The guys are busting their butts to, to fix it and get it back up and going. Ohio Cat's been busting their butt to keep these combines going. It's definitely not from a lack of effort, that's for sure. We're still pulling off, you know, 70 to 90 bushel beans. I'm tickled to death with them. You know, yeah, we've had some areas that are only averaging 60 bushel beans, but I'm happy they could have been 30 or 40. One, we didn't have a winter, so that already hurt us. Well, then a drought set in, so we actually had grasshoppers just hit us bad. And that's the first sign of a drought is when grasshoppers come in. We don't have a whole lot of beans out here to begin with. We've already cut our population down to 80,000, so every bean's life matters right now. Every year is a learning year, no matter what Mother Nature gives you. That's why you can never be upset at Mother Nature. She's just giving you a game plan for the next. Do I love getting high yields? Absolutely but it's gotta make sense and you know, you gotta be able to get through stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four before you can get that end goal. I love the crew we got, we're gonna get through it. Junior does an excellent job, my dad does an excellent job, and then Cody's really stepping up right now. I'm really proud of him. Poe's learning fast, it's a family even when you're away from your family. Yeah, we fight, we bicker, we don't get along all the time. You know, you guys are here long enough, you'll see some pretty good blow ups. It happens, we're with each other right now, 16, 18 hours a day, we're gonna get tired of each other. But at the end of the day, you know, we can usually calm down, crack a cold one together and be okay. A lot of people's mental health has been tested. And then you go look at farming where commodity prices was terrible. We don't like being in that position. You know, we're a business first, but it's what we know and we're a family farm. We wanna keep this within our generations and so many other farmers out there also. We're gonna do anything we can on some of these crops, just like what we're in now. I'm still tickled death that we're getting this yield and we didn't give up. You know, you always gotta look for that bright side. I, I always try to stay positive. You know, I always look for that little glimmer of hope you know, to get you on the ne next level. I'm thankful that our family's healthy, you know, my kids are healthy. They're having a blast at sports, being back at school, seeing their friends again. 
And like I think for pretty much all of us in 2020, we can just say, you know, F 2020, get this year over with. But, you know, we said that about 2019 and look what 2020 gave us. So I guess we gotta be careful what we ask for. Corey owns a crop consulting company called Advanced Yield, and we've been working with Corey for two years now. Advanced Yield's a lot more catered to customers' specific needs, not just everything fits all program. Corey is very competitive. He likes to look outside the box. If you're willing to go outside your comfort zone, there's different things that he'll suggest, but they'll work for you. I might say go for it. All right, so yeah, today we're gonna harvest these soybeans. We'll have a 40-foot flex draper header on it, so it takes a pretty big bite. Today is October 22nd. I believe it's Thursday. It's hard to keep up with that sometimes. Uh, and we are in Woodruff County, Arkansas, harvesting soybeans. We had some wind damage, thanks to Laura. So we got a lot of lodging out here. The farmer's the eternal optimist, me included. I was hoping it didn't hurt us that bad, but unfortunately it did. The yield on the parts of the field that aren't lodged is, is in excess of 100 bushels. But as you go north through the field, the, the lodging increases and we lose about 30 bushels. Got some issues out here. Yeah, there's definitely some good spots, and I'm proud of them, and kind of proud of the whole field. But I don't know if we're gonna be able to come up with a competitive yield out here. And that's typical to agriculture. There's always something going on. Welcome to the world of farming. Always something. These are planted May the 11th, and we're hard. they've been ready for a while, but it's wet. We have a wide planting window for soybeans in, in Arkansas. I, mean, I know guys who planted soybeans in August. They didn't make very much, but they did plant them. All in all, we've had good crops this year. This is a good yield. How, how can we be upset with this? It's just been, been nice if they'd all been standing. Uh, that hurricane came through end of August, and these beans were late in the reproductive cycle. And something happens when they go down like this. Something happens to the yield. But look at that. That's a mess. So yeah, 25, 30 bushels. What Laura's cost me on this field. It is what it is. It's just an average. I think in 2018, we had some rain in mid-August and it just rained and rained and rained and it was hot and the diseases set in and affected the uh, plant and it was it was just ugly. The, I mean, the, the soybeans didn't even look like soybeans. They, the hoppers weren't even yellow when they were full. It was disgusting. Those, those beans just looked black. We don't get a hurricane every year, but you know, we'll always have some weather event. It's been pretty consistent. We hadn't had any complete zeros, complete problem areas. We had a couple of dry periods in there, but all in all, it wasn't too bad. There's always gonna be some pockets. The yields aren't so great, whether it's drought or flood or some other issue. But all in all, doing pretty good. COVID-19 uh, really hadn't affected us that much in Woodruff County, Arkansas, or Gregory, Arkansas. We're kind of isolated anyway. 
we don't see, see a lot of people, but so far me and my crew, we've been healthy. So we're blessed in that respect. So it's for real, I'm ready to get this behind us. Revitech is a brand new product from BASF. We're really excited for that. Revitech is going to be able to help growers stretch yields more than they have in the past. The number one name of the game should be reducing stress. You reduce stress, you increase yield. I'm excited about Revitech. We use it on every acre. We're looking at upwards of 60 days control. It's going to take great farmers and just propel them so much further than we've ever been before. It's a busy day here on Miles Farms, and we're going to keep getting it acre by acre. Everything goes well today. We'll get through with the soybeans. So we'll have about 4,000 acres of soybeans knocked out. We've got our corn back earlier. So today's a very exciting day for me and my employees, too. Are we done? No. We still got probably 250 acres of peanuts to combine. Uh, we've got about 800 acres of cotton to pick, and we'll take these six machines to my uncle and my cousin. The minute we get through here, our harvest is over with as far as soybeans, but the hurricane's coming Friday, it looks like, so we'll take all six machines over to them. 3,500 acres of beans in the field, 400 acres of rice, and a hurricane coming Friday? Now, do you go be selfish and work your ground, or do you go help them get their crop out? You know, whether it's family or whether it's a neighbor, it's a uh, you know, we've all got to work at this thing together, and sometimes we lose that perspective. But it's hard for me to sleep at night knowing that there's somebody else's crop out there that, you know, that we could help get out prior to the hurricane. So it made me feel good today, made my heart feel, feel good that, you know, that my employees are behind me when, when they work like they work, and then we go to someone else's farm and cut that. It makes me feel good that everybody's on the same page. So as far as the bean crop goes, uh, when we first started out, it uh, looked like we were going to have a record bean crop. And you know, based on the yield monitors, the, the beans down here ended up uh, laying down a little more, and uh, so the yield may not be quite there. But overall, I think we're still going to end up with, with a normal uh, bean average. We had, like I said, we had some fields that we planted really early that uh, they cut really high. Uh, that's where our yield plot was and then it's kind of went downhill from there. But still, we're looking at, at the 70 to 75 mark on these later beans, so still feel pretty fortunate, you know, with what they've been through to uh, have what we, what we have. We were, you know, two or three weeks late getting most of them planted, and it's just been a challenge. But overall, the bean crop seems like a pretty decent bean crop for us. And this harvest, it'll teach anybody something. It'll teach you patience. It'll, it'll teach you anger management. It, it'll teach you all of it. I've been blessed with a lot of stuff in my lifetime. He's probably been one of the biggest blessings that I've had. Of course, a lot of y'all don't know, but I lost my best friend and my farm manager a year ago, last Father's Day, to an ATV accident that both of us were involved in. Lane's 25, but he turned into a 40-year-old as far as maturity when that happened. What I've seen him do last year and what I've seen him do this year, because we lost our right arm, basically, uh, when we lost Billy. You always hear about family squabbles and families hard to work together, and our operation is totally opposite. This operation is, uh, on the back of our shirt, it says farmly, and that's what, uh, that's what we believe. I'm not your boss, I'm your partner. You know, you're a partner in this operation. You know, when we cry, they, they cry. When we, when we laugh, they laugh. And when, we, when we're working hard, they're working harder normally.
I've got a whole new perspective on farming now. Kevin saved me probably 15 years worth of data in one, one meeting. Don't even look at the expense because you're gonna gain that back within one year. It's something that you're making a long-term investment in. It's just been one fight after the other. Nothing has been smooth. You know, there's no real silver bullet to growing high yielding beans. I, I mean, maybe Weaver's got a silver bullet, I don't know. Evidently, Cobb's got one too. He's learned something. But what we figured out years ago was Beans actually like more phosphorus than they like anything else, more so than what you would think, like way, way, way more. So we plant them June 1st, which is way later than I'd plant a contest field. I would like to plant them in April if I'm gonna be in a contest situation, but plant them June 1st. They jumped out of the ground, got going, because it got hotter after that, but that farm never missed a rain from the time we planted it until the time we were good, until they were done, they'd never missed a rain. The reason that that field, I did what I consider was good, that field lays on a real big hillside. Uh, well, a big hillside for us over here, which is not much of a slope for most people, especially not Weaver, but it water runs off of it pretty good. The reason that they do well on that one particular spot is where I picked out my contest spot is, it's real high in organic matter and it's real high in phosphorus on the one end of this farm. They spread sludge on it years and years ago, so the phosphorus levels are high. So that was one, that's one reason why they ended up doing really well. Can you ever replicate a year like this year? Like, it was hot, it was wet, it was dry then for a short stint of time. Then it got like swampland wet. Then it got really cool. I mean, we just bred diseases after diseases after diseases. Most of the time, if I'm not running it, uh, one of my sons is running it. Temple runs it the most. But Alexander, he's got his license, he's older. I can rely on him to do pretty much everything else. He's like my right hand. I mean, you name it, it's all those things that they keep it running. You know, you can get anybody to run a combine, but you can't get every, anybody to run the whole thing. The problem with running a combine is, is, you know, the data at the end of the year is only as good as the person that collects it, and only as good as the person that put it in. The data collection thing has got to be such a crucial, crucial part of what we do. Like everything I do, I'm looking at this iPad, trying to figure out what I'm gonna do for next year. It's a lot. I mean, it's mind-boggling a lot. I got together with them. We've got a pop-up blend and there's some special stuff in it and I made it specifically for this. With Monty's we have trusted advisors and we get that relationship. Working with Temple on this field of beans, we've got a very good root development. I mean, that's awesome looking. Monty's carbon, I wouldn't farm if I couldn't use that. We're six generations. My kids will be the seventh. You know, I'm blessed to have my dad and my grandfather get everything started the way they did. Hopefully I can build on it. No pressure, right? So right now we're heading over here to check on Nathan. We're gonna see what he's up to. Nathan's disking ground, preparing it for next year, knocking down fodder. I got Uncle Tom, he's out doing some soil samples and winterizing two sprayers. We got 64 acres of beans left to roll, but we're going to check on Nathan to make sure he hasn't broke anything in the last half an hour. 
So we're out here back at the research farm. We're looking at different things. Uh, this is one of our MAC test trials where we're testing different products for MAC members. A lot of Monty's liquid carbons being used, a lot of Monty sugar, and some other ideas that were concocted by MAC members to come back and see how does it yield, how does it compare, what should we be doing as a group. And you know, you keep hearing me say the word team. It really does revolve around team. I know Thanksgiving's right around the corner, you know, and this is the kind of time where I like to come back and say, you know, I'm lucky for the guys that I have. You always hear Perry Galloway, who's always happy and talks about all the good guys that work for him. I'm not as happy as Perry usually is half the time, but I'm successful because of the team I've got. You know, it started 10 years ago when I first got to meet Joe Dedman, and it moved forward from there. You know, Nate's been with me as an intern all the way up to a couple years now. And Ed and I have been together for 15 years, but five of that's been farming together. And, you know, as we're looking at things, you know, I'm really glad to have the team, you know, with Uncle Tom and Dad and all the knowledge we have, you know. As we're looking at all this, I mean, Nate's the youngest member of the team and he's really getting a lifetime of experience through all this because, you know, we'll fight over products, how we need to do it, how do we use it, what do we need to have happen. Chris, as far as I'm concerned, has what it takes to be the podfather. Now there's this guy by the name of Kevin Cobb that might cause him some trouble. But at the same time, I mean, we've got good research, got good yields. We've got a good shot at this thing. That's, uh, that's all we can ask for. It is a privilege to be able to work with people like him and Tom and Donald Cole and to get to hear him talk to Kevin. I haven't actually got a chance to meet Kevin or Brooks yet. I'm really, really looking forward to that. The opportunity to sit there and listen to what I consider absolute titans of this industry is, it's not something a 25-year-old kid gets that often. That's a bit of a blessing, and then when you're stuck with Weaver all day, sometimes it's a curse. You know, I don't know who's gonna be, end up being the winner of Podfather, but you know, on that three and a half acre block, that's 158 bushel beans. Let me tell you, we broke a, a combine part on it. You know, and you're sitting there and you're just humbled by the experience and watching these beans roll in and you're watching everything happen and you're filling trucks quicker in a little bit, your tank's getting filled and it's a pretty humbling fact. We don't know the limits of beans yet, but it's gonna be guys, you know, you got Perry Galloway, you got Temple, you got myself, we all talk. My team, we'll share 80% of what we're doing with you. The other 20% you're gonna have to join Mac in order to find out. But we're all about helping and we're all about sharing. You know, we sit in these meetings, we listen, we learn. We don't just have fertilizer company rep come in and see us. We actually call the BASF rep. He comes and visits with us. We like to question everybody. One of the big things in high production areas, I mean, talk to Cobb, Brooks, we never stop. Unless there's snow on the ground, we're finding something to do. You'll see a couple straw bale dikes out here where we gave up some ground to stop erosion. And I sit on the soil conservation board. I'm really big in soil health, soil production. We use a lot of more humics than we do cover crops for the fact that I feel the humics are helping to break down the residue in the soil and giving back to the ground more. We do try to get a lot of cover crops out where we can beans that we're doing research plots and it's almost near Thanksgiving, we won't get any cover crops planted on this ground this year. We use gypsum, we use a lot of humix to make sure that we're on the up and up on everything that we're doing. But because we live in the state of Maryland, we cannot spread any phosphorus-based fertilizers until March 1st. So, you know, we're still achieving high yields with following the state of Maryland's rules. You know, which is good because we do have a natural treasure called the Chesapeake Bay. And I do want it to be here later for my kids to have. And fish production, oyster production, it all has its role. We're all farmers. A fisherman's a farmer. He's farming and harvesting fish. Oystermen the same way. So we got to all work together to make sure we're keeping everything clean. <laughs>